Welcome to True Health Tuesday, and the truth will set you free. We're doing a new format now. I'm going to try and keep it in under 10 minutes. It's going to be very quick to educate you on how your body is actually working and to empower you to take care of yourself, taking care of yourself now because I'm you know, nobody has a spare body in the closet. So let's go in. First, we're going to talk about how to check your blood pressure correctly. And this is hugely important because does blood pressure go up uh, because it's a disease or is it an adaptation? So let's look at this. Now, if you ask the average Joe on the street, what's normal? Oh, they'll say 120 over 80. Really? And that's 120 over 80 for everyone? Well, where did that number come from? We're looking at 1997. The JNC or Joint National Committee 6 met and they said everybody should have 120 over 80. Now, you might think, I mean, these are pharmaceutical reps, they're, they own hospitals. Okay, but does that mean everybody 120 over 80? The 400-pound cigar store owner, the 12-year-old gymnast, you know, it, it just didn't make sense. So that changed in 2004 when JNC7 met and they said everyone's going to be 115 over 75. So now 30 million Americans are now high blood pressure when last week they were normal. Of course, that lasted till 2014. And that's when 150 over 90 was normal if you're over 60. Okay, they accept 2017, the American College of Cardiology says, you know, we, we have no data to support it, but we just feel 130 over 80 is good. So, you know, let's look at this. Okay, how are you going to check your blood pressure? Well, okay, the time of day will make a difference. A cold room, a full bladder. Um, if you're anxiety, think about white coat hypertension. And, and again, we're working with common sense here. Do you want to check your blood pressure after you've been running upstairs or bike riding or working out in the gym? Most people will say no because it's going to go higher. That's right. And you think about this. If you slept good, your blood pressure is here. If you slept bad, it's here. You're dehydrated, it's here. You're hydrated, it's here. You breathe correctly, it's here. Okay, and, and we got to look at this. And that's why Harrison's medical textbook said the first principle of the therapy of hypertension, high blood pressure, is the knowledge of when to treat and when not to treat. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Well, plus, I mean, you got to figure we're living in a pharmaceutical age where a chemical or a medication is giving you to alter your physiology. Uh, are you, is anyone suffering from lack of medications? I don't think so. Now, your body is self-healing and self-regulating, okay? Just like your dog, cat, and fish are, okay? So you have an automatic nervous system, and this governs that blood pressure. And in fact, it's in two parts. One part is the sympathetic or fight or flight, and that keeps you alive under stress. So if you're driving your car, all of a sudden, you got to slam on your brakes. Okay, bam, the fight or flight system kicks up. What does that do? It dilates your pupils. It elevates heart rate. It elevates blood sugar. It's amazing. And then when you're rested and calmed down and everything else beautiful, then the parasympathetic blood supply to the gut goes in there. And this is why under physical, chemical, or emotional stress, your fight or flight system can kick in. And so without looking at the stressors, without looking at the, that the nervous system that controls blood pressure, you're misdiagnosed with it. <laughs> I mean, so let's look at this. Now, heart rate variability. When you see all the movies, you see that blip on the screen, okay, that's called the QRST interval. We're measuring the height, the width, and the spacing of that over about three minutes, and we can measure the autonomic function. And you can see normal is that white dot there. Abnormal, sympathetic dominant, or low functioning parasympathetic, both are bad. Lots of data on heart rate variability, and I totally recommend it to find out where the problem is. Now, this is the key. If we look at how your body works, okay, and breathing is hugely important, and we're going to show how you have to breathe 10 minutes before you check your blood pressure, but we're going to talk about breathing because when you're breathing in, in through the nose, out through the mouth, you're actually getting that parasympathetic nervous system to work. Now, you've got sensors in your neck. You've got the cardiac and respiratory center at the base of the skull. You have C3, C4, C5 keeps you alive, and that is the nerve to the diaphragm. Plus you have a sensor in the middle of your neck that comes up, that carotid splits it internal and external, and you have a 
chemoreceptor and a baroreceptor. So it's always regulating carbon dioxide because if the carbon dioxide level is high, heart rate increases to get rid of that acid. So let's learn how to breathe. Number one, if you're breathing like this, where your chest is going up and your tummy is going in, you're not breathing correctly. When you breathe in, your diaphragm comes down and that tummy has got to come out. This is called diaphragmatic breathing, but I want you to breathe in through the nose. Why? Because nose breathing causes nitric oxide to be secreted. And and this is a bronchodilator and vasodilator. That means it opens up the air tubes and the blood tubes. So in, out. Tummy's filling up with air, out, tummy goes in. Diaphragmatic breathing is the key to oxygenating the system. Just remember those CO2 levels, this is exactly what your body is, gonna, is going to utilize with the sensors in your neck. Just think of that. Is the neck important? Yeah, you got the cardiac and respiratory center. You got the nerve that supplies the diaphragm, the phrenic nerve, and you have the sensors in the neck that measure carbon dioxide and heart rate or, or blood pressure. So think of this. Do you have high blood pressure or are you in stress? Bottom line. Find a doctor who's going to find the stressors that's causing your body to adapt with high blood pressure. That's the key. And it is it is so hard. There's multiple data points that say that you cannot measure high blood pressure in an office setting because of the white oak hypertension and the cold room and people. If you talk while you're taking it, you're getting elevations in blood pressure. So find the stressors. Find a doctor to measure those stressors. Have them find it correct it, and then you're going to find your blood pressure is going to normalize. It's the coolest thing ever. You may still have a lot of questions about high blood pressure, autonomic nervous system, stress, all of those things. So make sure you leave your questions in the comments below, and I'm going to get to those as many as I can, okay? And we're going to be posting those in um, just a few days. This is Dr. John Bergman, your voice of health, empowering you to know when you walk by a mirror, you look in it, you are made in the image and likeness of God. Your body is intelligent, self-healing, and self-regulating. God bless you.